In terms of Buddhistic theology it produces annihilation. This involves, not loss of identity, but the cessation of objectivity and the escape of spirit, plus mind, to its cosmic center. It has its analogy in the initiation at which the adept stands free from the limitations of matter in the three worlds. The internal fires of the system, of the planet, and of man are threefold. 1. 2. Interior fire at the center of the sphere, those inner furnaces which produce warmth. This is latent fire. Radiatory fire. This type of fire might be expressed in terms of physical plane electricity, of light rays, and of etheric energy. This is active fire. 3. Essential fire, or the fire elementals who are themselves the essence of fire. They are mainly divided into two groups. A. B. Fire devas are evolutionary entities. Fire elementals are evolutionary entities. Later we will elaborate on this when we consider the fire of mind and deal with the nature of the thought elementals. All these elementals and devas are under the control of the fire lord, Agni. When considering him and his kingdom the subject can be taken up at greater length. We might here point out, however, that our first two statements concerning the internal fires express the effect that the fire entities have upon their environment. Heat and radiation are other terms which might be applied in this sense. Each of these effects produces a INTROVUCTORYMARKS. Commit me three. Different class of phenomena. Latent fire causes the active growth of that in which it is embedded and causes that upward pushing which brings into manifestation all that is found in the kingdoms of nature. Radiatory fire causes the continued growth of that which has progressed, under the influence of latent fire, to a point receptive of the radiatory. Let us tabulate it thus. Systemic or macrocosmic, the solar logos of the grand man of the heavens. Latent or interior fire produces the internal heat which makes the solar system productive of all forms of life. It is the inherent warmth that causes all fertilization, whether human, animal, or vegetable. Active or radiatory fire retains in life and causes the evolution of all that has evolved into objectivity by means of latent fire. Planetary, or the heavenly men. What is laid down and in the system, as a whole, can be predicated of all planets which in their nature reflect the sun, their elder brother. Human, or the microcosmic man. Human-laden fire, the heat interior of the human frame causes production of other forms of life, such as 1, 2, 3, the physical body cells, organisms nourished by the latent heat, the reproduction of itself in other human forms, the basis of the sex function. to transmit active heat. It is necessary to differentiate between this radiation from the etheric, which is a radiation of prana, and magnetism, which is an emanation from a subtler body, usually the astral, and has to do with the manifestation of 54 ATREATISCONCOSMICFIRE the divine flame within the material sheets. 
the divine flame is formed on the second plane, the monotic, and magnetism which is a method of demonstrating radiatory fire, is therefore felt paramountly on the fourth and sixth planes, or through the buddhic and astral vehicles. These are, as we know, closely allied to the second plane. This distinction is of importance and should be carefully recognized. Having, therefore, made the above statements, we can proceed to take up somewhat in greater detail the interior fires of the systems, microcosmic and macrocosmic. Section 1. Division A. T-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S-O-F-T-H-E-S-H-E-A-T-H-S 1. The Three Channels 11. Fire Elementals and Devas I. The Three Channels for the Fire From the very use of the term, sheep, it would be noted that we are considering those fires which manifest through the medium of those externalities, of those veils of substance which hide and conceal the inner reality. We shall not here take up the subject of the sheets on the higher planes, but simply deal with the fires that animate the three lower vehicles, the physical body in its two divisions, etheric and dense, the emotional or astral body, and the mental sheet. It is frequently overlooked by the casual student that both the astral and the mental bodies are material, and just as material in their own way, as is the dense physical body, and also that the substance of which they are composed is animated by a triple fire, as is the physical. In the physical body we have the fires of the lower nature, the animal plane, centralized at the base of the spine. They are situated at a spot which stands in relation to the physical body as the physical sun to the solar system. This central point of heat radiates in all directions, using the spinal column as its main artery. But working in close connection with certain central ganglia, wherever located, and having a special association with the screen. 55. Start ion page 56. T H E I N T E R N A L F I R E S. 57. In the etheric body, which is an exact replica of its denser counterpart, we have the organ of active or radiatory fire, and, as is well known, the vehicle of prana. Its function is to store up the rays of radiatory light and heat which are secured from the sun, and to transmit them, via the spleen, to all parts of the physical body. Hence in the future it will come to be recognized that the spine and the spleen are of the utmost importance to the physical well-being of man, and that when the spinal column is duly adjusted and aligned, and when the spleen is free from congestion and in a healthy condition, there will be little trouble in the dense physical body. When the physical furnace burns brightly and when the fuel of the body, pranic rays, is adequately assimilated, the human frame will function as desired. The subject of the blending of these two fires, which is complete in a normal and healthy person, should engross the attention of the modern physician. He will then concern himself with the removal of nerve congestion or material congestion, so as to leave a free channel for the inner warmth. This blending, which is now a natural and usual growth in every human being, was one of the signs of attainment or of initiation in an earlier solar system. Just as initiation and liberation are marked in this solar system by the blending of the fires of the body, of the mind and of the spirit, so in an earlier cycle attainment was marked by the blending of the latent fires of matter with the radiator who were active fires, and then their union with the fires of mind. In the earlier period the effects and manifestation of the divine flame were so remote and deeply hidden as to be scarcely recognizable, were dimly there. Its correspondence can be seen in the animal kingdom, in which instance 
intuition and latency. 58. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on cosmic fire. And the spirit dimly overshadows. Yet all is part of a divine call. The subject of the radiatory heat of the macrocosmic and microcosmic systems will be dealt with in detail in a later subdivision. Here we will only deal with the latent interior fire of the A. Sun P. Planet Circa Man P. Atom we must remember that in both the astral and the mental sheets there exist the counterparts of the centers as found in the physical body. These centers concern matter and its evolution. One fundamental statement can be laid down and meant the internal fires of all these four sun, planet, man, and atom. There exists in the sun, in the planet, in man, and in the atom, a central point of heat, or if I might use the limiting in an a central cavern of fire, a nucleus of heat, and the central nucleus reaches the bounds of its sphere of influence, it brings past not by means of the threefold channel. 17a. The sun within the sun. subsequent ramifications. These streams are the seven vowels or seven notes. These seven vowels and notes must have special correlations with the seven Vedic meters, since in the Vishnu Purana, Parasara describes the Vedic meters as the coursers of the solar essence. Some thoughts on the Gita, P, 74. P-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S 59 To use that are generally understood to exist whenever the sun is considered. It is the point of Kersus incandescence, and the objective sphere of fire is for the manifestation of that internal combustion. This central heat radiates its warmth to all parts of the system by means of a triple channel, or through its rays of approach, which in their totality express to us the idea of the heat of the sun. 1. 2. The Akasha, itself the talist matter, or substance animated by latent heat. Electricity substance of one polarity, and energized by one of the three aspects logoic. To express it more occultly, substance showing forth the quality of the cosmic lord whose energy it is. 3. Light rays of pranic aspect, some of which are being now recognized by the modern scientists. They are but aspects of the latent heat of the sun as it approaches the earth by a particular line of new frequency. When the term, channel or ray of approach, is used, it means approach from the center of solar radiation to the periphery. What is encountered during that approach such as planetary bodies, for instance will be affected by the Akashic current, 
the electrical current, or the frantic current in some way, but all of these currents are only the internal fires of the system when viewed from some other point in universal, though not solar, space. It is, therefore, obvious that this matter of fire is as complex as that of the rays. The internal fires of the solar system become external and radiatory when considered from the standpoint of a planet, while the internal fires of the planet will affect a human being as radiation in exactly the same way as the planet emanations of his etheric body affect another physical body as radiatory. The point to be grasped in all these. 60. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on cosmic fire. Aspects of that one and all have to do with matter or substance, and not with mind or spirit. He. The planet. Deep in the heart of the planet such a planet is the Earth. For instance, of the eternal fires that occupy the central sphere, or the caverns which filled with incandescent burning make life upon Earth possible at all. The internal fires of the moon are practically burned out, and, therefore, she does not shine save her reflection, having no inner fire to blend and merge with light external. These inner fires of the earth can be seen functioning, as in the sun, through three main channels. 1. Productive substance, or the matter of the planet Vitalis by heat. This heat and matter together act as the mother of all that germinates, and as the protector of all that dwells therein and thereon. This corresponds to the Akasha, the active Vitalis matter of the solar system, that nourishes all as does a mother. 2. Electrical fluid, a fluid which is latent in the planet though is yet but little recognized. It is perhaps better expressed by the term, animal magnetism. It is the distinctive quality of the atmosphere of a planet, or its electrical ring pass not. It is the opposite pole to the solar electrical fluid, and the contact of the two in there. Correct manipulation is the aim perhaps unrealized of all scientific endeavor at this time. 3. That emanation of the planet which we might term planetary prana. It is that which is referred to when one speaks of the health-giving qualities of Mother Nature, and which is back of the cry of the modern physician, when he wisely says, back to the earth. It is the fluidic emanation of this prana which acts upon the physical body, though in this case not via the etheric body. It is ab, T-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S. 61. Sorbent through the skin purely and the pores are its line of least resistance. C. The man. At the base of the spine lie hid the fires of the human system, or the internal fires of the microcosm. The center is located there, and from it the radiations go forth along the three channels, recognizable in the spine. 1. Bodily warmth, the channel along which the heat radiates and which finds the goal of its attention to be the heating of the corporeal frame. This vitalization of the dense matter of the body finds its correspondence in the systemic akasha, an inflammatory productive substance. 2. Nervous response. This is the vitalizing tenuous fluid which applies itself to the stimulation of the nervous centers, and which creates electrical response to contact between the nerves and the brain. It should now be more closely studied. It corresponds to systemic electricity, and to planetary electricity. 3. Pranic emanation. The emanation, via the etheric body, which corresponds in man to solar prana and to planetary prana. 
This demonstrates principally in the health aura and has not to do with magnetic qualities, as generally interpreted when considering a personality, a man is a unit. I make this repetition as it is very necessary that no mental confusion exists between that magnetism which is a spiritual emanation and that which is purely animal. It might be wise here to point out that this triple manifestation of fire demonstrates in the astral and mental bodies likewise, having to do with the substance of those bodies. We might express this fire in its triple manifestation as the sum total of the essential fire, or life activity of the third logos. It should be carefully borne. 62-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-C-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E In mind with the manifestation of the work of the three Lagoi is the expression of the mind of some cosmic entity. In the same way, the seven planetary entities, the seven heavenly men, are seven Lagoi likewise cosmic beings who in their totality i.e., the seven planetary logoi, 181920-18T. Suva Rao says on page 20, of esoteric writing, as a general rule, whenever seven entities are mentioned in the ancient occult science of India in any connection whatsoever, you must suppose that those seven entities came into existence from three primary entities and that these three entities again are evolved out of a single entity or monad. To take a familiar example, the seven colored rays and the solar ray are evolved out. The three primary colored rays and the three primary colors coexist with the four secondary colors in the solar ray. Similarly, the three primary entities which brought man into existence coexist in him with the four secondary entities which arose from different combinations of the three primary entities. In Christian terminology these are the three persons of the Trinity, and the seven spirits which are before the throne. Compare, our God is a consuming fire. Heb. 12.29 19 inches I have already said in speaking of this logos, that it was quite possible that it was the logos that appeared in the shape of the first Dian Chohan, our planetary spirit, when the evolution of man was recommenced after the last period of inactivity on this planet, as stated in Mr. Sinnott's book, esoteric Buddhism, and after having set the evolutionary current in motion, retire to the spiritual plane congenial to its own nature, and has been watching since over the interests of humanity, and now and then appearing in connection with a human individuality for the good of mankind. For you may look upon the logos represented by Krishna as one belonging to the same class as the logos which so appeared. In speaking of himself, Krishna says, Chap, X, verse 6. The seven great rishis, the four preceding manus, partaking of my nature were born from my mind. From them sprang, was born the human race in the world. He speaks of the Sakta Rishis and of the Manus as his Manasaputras, our mind-born sons, which they would be if he was the so-called Sajapati, who appeared on this planet and commenced the work of evolution. 
the Theosophist, Volume 8, P. 443. 20 The following tabulation should be borne in mind. 7 branch races make. 1 subrace 7 subraces make. 1 root race. 7 root races make. 1 world period. T-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S. 63. Each of these cosmic entities is, in his essential essence, fire. Each manifests as fire in a threefold manner. In point of time the cosmic lord of active intelligence, considered from the standpoint of cosmic evolution, is more evolved than his two brothers. He is the life of matter, its latent internal fire. His is the fire essence that lies at the heart of the sun, of the planet, and of man's material forms. He is the sum total of the past. The Lord of Cosmic Love now seeks union with his brother, and, in point of time, embodies all the present. He is the sum total of all that is embodied, he is conscious existence. He is the sun divine in his life and nature evolved through every existent form. The Lord of Cosmic Will holds hid the future within his plans and consciousness. They are all three the sons of one Father, all three the aspects of the one God, all three are spirit, all three are soul, and all three are rays emanating from one cosmic center. All three are substance, but in the past one Lord is the perfected manifestation of the cosmic Lord of Love. This should be pondered upon for it reveals a mystery. The blending of the three fires, the merging of the three rays, and the cooperation of the three Logoi. Have in view at this time and within this solar system, the development of the essence of the cosmic Lord of Love, the second person in the Logoic Trinity. Earlier it was not so, later it will not be, but now it is. When viewed from the cosmic mental plane these three constitute the personality of the Logos and are seen functioning as one. Hence the secret well recognized as fact, though not understood, of the excessive heat, occultly expressed, of the astral or central body of the triple personality. It animates and controls the physical body, and its desires hold sway in the majority of cases. It demonstrates in time and space the core.